Well, here's my big question leading into this game. How does Kyrie fit with the other two? Because the other two seem like they're fine together and they've played off each other. Kyrie is the guy who's used to having the ball in his hand. Is this a potential problem? I mean, I definitely think it could be. I think this is why Steve Nash gets paid the big bucks to try to figure it out. But, you know, Kyrie's been gone for two weeks. The last time he played against Utah was the best game he's ever played for the Nets. You haven't seen him since then. And since he's been gone, they've upgraded the position. James Harden is a better player than Kyrie Irving. He's more reliable than Kyrie Irving. He's accomplished more in the last five years than Kyrie Irving has. So, And you could just see the chemistry that he and Kevin Durant have on the court. So with Kyrie playing off the ball, how are they going to uh, spread the minutes out between the the three of them? It's going to be interesting to see because, you know, the win against Orlando, the first game out, Orlando's a little banged up. But the win they had the other night uh, was a quality win on Monday against a very good team in Milwaukee. And Durant and James Harden are two of the best offensive players we've seen in the league. That one, the same team, is pretty remarkable. They're tough to stop. So I don't know how Kyrie's going to fit in because you know, he likes having the ball in his hands, but let's face it, James Harden is a little bit better with the ball in his hands, and that's where I would go if I were Steve Nash. How does the rest of the, te- the team adjust to this, of having those three guys? Yeah, that's, that's going to be the interesting part because – Now you're taking somebody out of the starting lineup, and unless you're going to play Jeff Green at center, I'm assuming you're going to keep DeAndre Jordan in there, and Joe Harris is a guy that spaces the floor. So someone's going to come out. I'm I'm assuming it'll it'll be Jeff Green, but you'll be playing pretty small with, I guess, Kevin Durant as as your power forward. It's going to be a tough adjustment, I think, for a lot of them. But the one thing about Kevin Durant, and just the way that he plays, very much like LeBron, you know, he has a lot of confidence in his teammates and the way that he plays, he instills confidence in his teammates. And he's always looking, you know, to make plays. And Joe Harris, is, to me, has benefited the most with Kevin Durant. They have a pretty good thing going when they're out on the court. He talks a lot to Joe Harris. He knows where Joe Harris is on the floor. And I think a lot of those guys are really good role players. They got rid of two really uh, good role players in Jared Allen and Karis Subert. But I think those other guys kind of know – we're in a position now where we might be able to make or they should be able to make a pretty deep run in the playoffs. Do you think that the Nets gave up the Kings ransom to get Harden because they're just they they just don't know what's going on uh, from game to game with Kyrie or were they going to do this uh, even if Kyrie was there? Well that's my thing, right? If Spencer didn't really doesn't get hurt and Kyrie's all in and the Nets go out and they're 9 and 3 in the first 12 games and they're making this trade, I'm, I'm not so sure they're making the trade, but I think Dinwiddie going down and then the situation with Kyrie Irving, whatever the like to me, whatever the reason was, and let's face it, he didn't really he didn't really explain why he missed no, two weeks. I not guess at he all. Doesn't have to. But but my thing is from the Nets standpoint, you know, the Nets it, you know, it's not a group home. They're not a political organization. The Nets are a basketball team. And you know, they you know they pay people a lot of money and they have to worry about trying to put the best team out there. And I think when you have Kevin Durant on your team, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to Kevin Durant to try to go for it. So I think they did give up a lot, but you do have a player like Harden on the team. And I think they did it in terms of, all right, so now we know we have Kevin Durant and James Harden. So tonight they're going to have Kyrie Irving. But if you're Sean Marks and Steve Nash, how can you say, yeah, come playoff time, we know we'll, we know we'll have the three of these guys, barring injury I'm talking about. Because Kevin Durant and James Harden always play. That's not necessarily the case with Kyrie Irving. And whatever has happened to him in the last two weeks, and if he needs help, I'm sure the Nets would look after all their employees. They'd want to help them out. And if he and if he and if he's going to need help again, you would hope that he would get that. But who knows when this is going to happen, Michael? What if it happens on the eve of the playoffs? What right. if it happens after mm-hmm. Game One of a playoff, where he just were to leave the team for a week or two weeks? You cannot sit there and tell me, no, no, that won't happen. How would you know that? What do you what do you actually do, Frank? In terms from the standpoint of getting a team together, when you, when you make a move this big midseason, where everything on the team is basically different, how much can you get together and practice to really change this? And how much of it is oh, we're going to let Harden and Durant kind of do what they do and work around the, the the sort of what they give us? Yeah, that's a good point because right now there isn't a lot of practice time, and also because of COVID. They're trying to limit how many times everyone is together. So I think it is difficult. But I do think when you have great players, guys tend to figure it out. Like I, I was laughing the other the Harden's first game because especially in that light blue uniform, he's out of shape. He looks like I said, he looks like somebody's 45 year old uncle who's been hearing about his nephews going to the park, and he's I'll come down and I'll show you guys how it's done. I mean, <laughs> but then he does it, tearing it up, and he's and he's not in good shape. I mean, he's he's remarkable. 
what he's been able to do. I mean, he, he definitely needs to probably drop like we all do, maybe like 5, 10, 15 pounds. But when he gets in really good shape, and he's a worker. That's the one thing about James Harden. I said it to you guys the last time I was on, was, you know, he's kind of a bit of a throwback. He likes to have fun. Not in COVID, he doesn't. But in, when you're allowed to hang out, he likes to hang out. He enjoys the life of a single guy. But when it comes time for the referee to throw the ball up, that dude's ready to play. He plays yeah, all the even time. During, he plays a ton of minutes. Even during it COVID, though, he was hanging with a little baby. So, even yeah, during COVID. Yeah, that was a problem. He was ha- and he was handing out honey buns and all that stuff. But, again, <laughs> no one likes the way that he handled his departure from Houston. But he ended up getting his way, just like Kawhi Leonard 